Hi, this is Craig in Tokyo, Japan for Digital People Folk, and today I have hopefully, which will be a short video on how to disable Stack Driver on Google Cloud Platform, or basically turn it off for people that may not be using it. Before we go into the video, I'd like to ask if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to the channel. I want you to know that I only review services that I really use and that I pay for that can either help with my work as a digital marketer and analyst uh, on the B2B side or that I can use or that I'm using for my starter, my startup replay LLC. Um, so please subscribe or like the video or leave a comment. Um, I'm loving the comments that's coming in from people. So let's go into the video. First, what is Stack Driver? Stack Driver is Google's monitoring suite uh, within Google Cloud Platform. So it's part of Google Cloud and Basically, it's your logging platform, your monitoring, whether your site's up, uh, looking at any errors, um, debugger, uh, alerts that you can set up to go to in case any issues are going on with your uh, containers or your app or your network. So that's what Stackdriver does, and it integrates with all of the tools within GCP and even other cloud platforms. So this year, Google announced that in July, uh, July 1st to be exact, that Stackdriver would start to impose a cost for GCP users. Previously before that, any amount of logging or monitoring was free to all GCP users. And as of July 1st, basically it came with a cost. So the cost of using Stackdriver was that for logging, it would be the first 50 gigabytes per project. And then for monitoring, uh, basically monitoring of all the metrics within GCP, it would be free for the first 150 megabytes per billing account. And these are really uh, important to note for this video. Um, right here, the monitoring cost. At first, July 1st, you really didn't see any change in your account because it took a little bit of time for um, for basically your free amount, you didn't notice anything in your bill. It's only after the free amount was surpassed that you started to see extra charges. And this is what happened to me. So since I'm a user in Japan, my cost is in Japanese yen, but I don't think that there's a lot of uh, Japanese users looking at my videos right now. So I put the amount in dollars just to make it easier for you to understand. So I have a lot of instances. I have a lot of uh, separate sites on GCP. And initially my cost was around $56 a month. Um, more than that in yen. Um, well, that's the conversion of the price in yen, and I was fine with that um, because I knew what, what the cost per instance was for me. I also have a price breakdown video that you can look at to look at the breakdown of my cost in case you're ever wondering what goes into uh, the cost if you have a WordPress site on Google Cloud Platform. And then at the end of July, my bill went up to $131, um, roughly. And in August, it also was at about $131, which was about the same. And then I made changes. Around this time is when I started to investigate what can I do because I wasn't actively looking using stack driver and i didn't find a lot of documentation on how to correctly uh reduce the cost but i i did a lot of trial and error and finally reduced the cost down to uh, 87 dollars in september 
and then as of last month in October uh, I got it down to $65 now this price is more than what I was paying before but I did also reconfigure my instances a better way and I was and I also added a new site um, so this cost is very much expected let me show you how to go into your bill to make sure what you're paying and how you can decide how to take action on it so first what we want to do is go into billing go to reports pick a date range so it was around July August that I had high bills so I'll go to August I can keep it on the daily view and this basically would tell me the projects that was making uh, the bills but then you want to group by either product so you can start to see where the charge is coming from and I start to notice that stock driver was uh, was basically having a, a daily charge that was more than well basically a lot more than I expected and you can look at the SKU if you want to also uh, for a more detailed view so after this I wanted to understand what could I do uh, to reduce this price and here's a couple of things that I thought could work so initially I went to my VM instant settings and I saw that there were logs going to stack driver and I thought well if I just turn these logs off then perhaps it would reduce my cost and I looked down I scrolled down on the VM instant settings and saw that stack driver logging was write only which means that it was writing the logs to stack driver and I thought okay I'll just go and edit the uh, the API so that it's not writing anymore and unfortunately when I did that my instance wouldn't start anymore so I realized that that definitely was not the right solution then I went to the logging ingestion on stack driver itself to see if I could possibly turn off the ingestion that way So what I did was I just turned off the logs uh, here and and basically from this view it did seem that I turned off the logs so I shouldn't be make, making any bills. Now I did this possibly in July but I noticed in August I was still getting a bill so this also did not work so what was the solution that actually worked the, the solution that worked was I had to go into stack driver itself I realized that stack driver by default is attached to your billing account so clicking into your workspace settings you can look at the usage details and the usage details were telling me the real amount of data that was ingested by stack driver uh, monitoring and this was what I was actually being billed for and on this view there's also monitored accounts so basically I realized that I could not get rid of my default 
monitored account. It The system just would not let me. So I started to think, what would be the best way to deal with this? And I realized that I would take my instances and put them in a separate project. So you can have your billing project in one project and your actual instances that are creating logs in another project and have that attached to your billing project. So let's say, for example, that my replay basic is the project that's attached to Stackdriver. You make a replay instance project that houses all of your instances. So that way you can exclude those from Stackdriver and it basically won't ingest any logs at all. And that's the way that you correct your project. So I'm not getting into how you duplicate a your instances or move them in this video. I'm just telling you a way that you could set up your Google Cloud Platform project so that you have more options and and solutions that fit you. Um, so house a project that takes care of your your, your billing um, and you can make separate projects that can have your instances. I also still kept my DNS zones in my default project and that didn't affect anything at all and still I was able to utilize another project to have my instances with my WordPress sites. But anyway, I hope that this video helped you. I'm Craig for Digital People Folk. And please, if you like the video, subscribe, uh, like the video or share. Hopefully that it will provide you with options on on how to control your spend and make your dreams come true. Anyway, Craig in Tokyo signing off.